It's time for another trip down nostalgia lane here on the Council of Trent podcast. I'm your host, Catholic Answers apologist and speaker, Trent Horn. And on Free For All Fridays, we talk about whatever interests me. And what interests me now is just a return to where I grew up. Now, I did a previous episode on growing up in Encinitas, California, north of San Diego, when I was like a little kid. But then my family moved to Phoenix, Arizona when I was in the sixth grade. So I went to junior high, high school, college, and spent a little post-college time in Phoenix. Uh, That's where I became Catholic, met a lot of friends in college and in my youth group there, and I'm still friends with many of these people to this day. So I have a lot of fond memories of going to high school there, community college, college, doing my life teen outreach there. And here's what I thought would be fun, because I recently got to go back and I spoke at St. Teresa Parish in Phoenix, where, which is where I became Catholic. In fact, if you read the book, Why We're Catholic, the beginning of Why We're Catholic is dedicated to St. Teresa Parish, to that entire parish community, because there were so many wonderful people there that helped me to understand and discern uh, becoming Catholic. And so I'm literally eternally grateful to that community. So while I was in town, I got to see my parents— got to see friends, I thought I would explore some of the old stomping grounds, and I wanted to check out five places that I enjoyed eating, especially with friends. They were kind of our places, you know? It's kind of like Cheers, where everybody knows your name. I, I'm probably butchering that. Uh, it wasn't a bar. I didn't have... Oh, who do I have here? So my little guy, Matthew, just came in, and I think that Matt, he's got natural hosting abilities. Uh, he certainly wasn't at a loss for words when we did the Free For All Friday on favorite Super Nintendo games. So I kind of think Matt should have his own little Catholic podcast and YouTube channel, maybe one where he reviews like Catholic kids media and books and toys. I don't know. It might be fun. So where was I? Oh, it wasn't like Cheers. It wasn't like a bar or something like that. But there were certain restaurants, eateries, that I have a lot of memories associated with. So I went back, and I had a simple mission. I wanted to visit them and see if they still existed. Because it's always hard when there was a place that was very important to your memories, and it doesn't exist anymore. For example, the high school I went to. I went to Arcadia High School in uh, the Scottsdale Unified School District. And the school is still there, but they they tore down the buildings a few years ago that when I went to the school, the buildings had been built back in the 1960s, even maybe even earlier. Uh, Steven Spielberg went to my high school and there was a big circle building that all the classrooms were in. And people say that's what inspired the circular spaceship in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So uh, it's kind of older 1960s architecture and school construction. They tore all of that down. I mean, the land is still there, but it's buildings that uh, that weren't there when I when I went to the school. So it's kind of hard when a piece of your memory or history gets sort of torn down. So let's talk about five eateries in Phoenix, Arizona that I had a lot of fond memories of. The ones that still exist... You can swing by them, too, uh, if they're still around, that is. So number five would be the Sugar Bowl. So in Old Town Scottsdale, there was a diner that I really enjoyed. Friends and I, we would go to, not usually to eat, but sometimes just to get ice cream and hang out. Uh, And it kind of had this 1950s vibe to it. It Pink and white, old menus, had a soda fountain. Uh, I had a playroom with a little arcade next to it, but it was just this bright pink and white decor, and it felt like 50s diner's food, and they served like actual great ice cream, like chocolate malts and the big glass uh, containers. And so another reason I like the Sugar Bowl was that was one of the first places where I took Laura on a date, actually. So we were still kind of long distance, and when I was spending time with my parents in Phoenix, she flew out to come and visit. And I just took her to the Sugar Bowl because I thought it would be a magical uh, kind of place. And I asked her this morning, I was like, did we have a good date at the Sugar Bowl? Did I mess it up? She was like, no, not it. Not at all. She said, though, she was a bit peeved that I waited until like three o'clock to take her to lunch because that's not how she normally operates. Like Laura was the kind of person her meal times would be like 7 a.m., 11 a.m., 3 p.m. And I was the kind of person my meal times were 3 p.m., 8 p.m., midnight. (laughs) So, and when we went on our honeymoon, that was a little bit of a clash there when some of us uh, didn't, you know, didn't get our food at the right times we expect. But hey, we learned to love each other, you know, first get to know each other really well. So that's why I remember taking Miss Laura on a date there and just having a lot of fun with friends. Like when we would be done with plays, when I would do drama productions, we'd all go there to get ice cream at the Sugar Bowl. 
Uh, so it's part of the Scottsdale Historic Preservation Register. Does it still exist? Survey says. So the Sugar Bowl is open, but I don't have time to swing by it and film right in front of it, but I do know that it's open. It's not open right now, it'll open this afternoon. Plus, even if it were open, uh, I can't go and eat ice cream at 10.30 in the morning. That would really signal to people that I've given up on life. So at least one part of my childhood is, is still remaining. Uh, let's see how the other parts fare. All right, so the Sugar Bowl is still there. Here's another one that was really big for me in high school. So I went to Arcadia High School, and right outside of the high school was a Pizza Hut. Okay, so the first entry on our list is the Sugar Bowl. You've probably never heard of that, but I'm sure you've heard of Pizza Hut, no doubt. Uh, by the way, a little history on that. It was found, Pizza Hut was founded in June of 1958 by Dan and Frank Carney. They were Wichita State students in Wichita, Kansas. So it was like one of the first pizza restaurants. Like before this... Like, I mean, you think about it, in the 1940s, you didn't, like, go out to a restaurant. Let's go order a pizza and bring it home. You didn't have anything like that. So Pizza Hut was, like, the first restaurant to, to do this. Then it eventually got bought by Pepsi Company in 1997. And then it was turned into Yum! brand foods, which includes, like, KFC, I think, and Taco Bell. Like, we, need a, we need a food conglomerate name. How about Yum! Yum! Foods! Okay. So there was this Pizza Hut right outside of Arcadia High School. And whenever we would have half days, oh, it was awesome. We would... Uh, my friends and I, we would walk over to the Pizza Hut to get Pizza Hut lunch buffet. So if we were dismissed, remember half days at school, be dismissed at 1130. I don't even know why they bother having the half day, right? You got out at 1130 and the day was yours. And we would walk to the Pizza Hut and do the lunch buffet. And we would get all the slices of pizza we want. And because we're teenagers, we don't recognize bad food when it's presented to us at cheap prices. And even they had the dessert pizza. Uh, in the buffet, you could also get all of, like, the cinnamon dessert pizza that you wanted. Oh, it was amazing. And then I remember once, we, we it was a half day, we went and did that, got ate a ton of dessert pizza. We walked, I think, another mile, because we didn't have cars. I think we were sophomores. We didn't have cars. And we walked a mile to the movie theater to watch Fast and the Furious. You remember Fast and the Furious? We were like, this is such a cool car racing movie, and we're so sophisticated to go and watch it. And now, like, they have Fast and the Furious F9, where they're going into space. If you had told me, by the way, in the ninth sequel, they're going to go to space, it actually it happened. Um, so that was that was something I enjoyed. We had the little half days. We could go to the Pizza Hut by the school. Is the Pizza Hut still there? Let's see. Nah, it's not here either. Now it's a sushi restaurant. And I bet they don't even have dessert sushi. It's gone. Well, can't win them all. all right, here's the next one I remember as a kid growing up in Phoenix. Well, this is more with family. When you wanted a very special family time, usually around Thanksgiving, where did you go? My family and I, we went to the Hometown Buffet. Oh, you love Hometown Buffet. All the macaroni you want, all the soft serve ice cream. The trick is to get the cookies in the dessert area, put them in the bowl, and put the soft serve ice cream on top of them. They had all kinds of entrees, a carving station. It was great stuff. And so my family, they would, my mom would bring a, like a tablecloth and put it over the table, and we had our Thanksgiving. No dishes, and we would have nice, you know, that was our fancy time of going out. You had the buffet. Everybody gets what they want. You could get as much uh, soda or chocolate milk that you would want. It was amazing. And so I, I miss that, though nowadays I wouldn't go back because, once again, looking back with my adult eyes at the food, it wasn't very good. Uh, it's funny, when I was a teenager, I loved eating at Subway. I, I just got a foot-long turkey sandwich every day. Now I'm like, oh, Subway, eat fresh. Not so fresh. A Jim Gaffigan reference there. Uh, so now if I looked back, I'd realize the food is not, not good, not worth the price. Uh, but I liked it as a kid, and it was really fun. Uh, so does Hometown Buffet in Phoenix, Arizona, I went to, does it still exist? Survey says... It's gone. Hometown Buffet is no more. Now it's, this, it's a brewery. I think it's called Fate Brewery. It was Fate... They tore down the place where he enjoyed so many Thanksgivings. They didn't, they didn't just tear that down. They tore down a bunch around here, actually. That used to be a whole shopping center. It was like a smoke shop, and there was a nice Greek place. It's gone. They're tearing down my childhood left and right. Instead of the great hometown buffet, they got a, yet another brewery. There's a million breweries. There was only one hometown buffet. That's gone. And you know what was really sad during the pandemic? Matthew loved when we would take him to Soup Plantation. Uh, you, you probably know it as Sweet Tomatoes, but Soup Plantation in California, it's kind of like hometown buffet, but without meat. So it's even worse. There's no meat. You get salad, 
pasta, maybe some focaccia bread, and some ice cream that was barely soft serve ice cream. It was like 80% water, 20% ice cream, if you could call it that. And then because of the pandemic, uh, they closed Soup Plantation. They all went out of business, went bankrupt, and they're gone. Oh, c'est la vie. But now Matthew, he was so, when we told him, he was really sad. We waited to tell him until we got to Texas, and he said, that's okay, Dad, the Soup Plantation closed, because I still have Hard Eight, and that's my favorite place, Hard Eight Barbecue here in Texas. So it all worked out. All right, number four, Philly to the Max. This is in downtown Tempe, Arizona, Mill Avenue, kind of the hip part of college part of town connected to Arizona State University. My college friends and I, we always would go to Philly to the Max and eat Philly cheesesteaks because we were young and had cast iron stomachs. Now I can't do that. And it just felt once again like a hip place with really good food. This place is memorable to me because I once took a nice young lady on a date to Philly to the Max. And I thought, and I had reconnected with her at a party. We were playing Halo together, playing video games. We were playing Halo. And I thought, great, Catholic plays Halo, plays video games. What more do I want? So I asked her, you want to go on a date? We went to Philly to the Max. And then I say the meal prayer, and she just looks at me and says, oh, are you still into the whole religion thing? I was like, well, I thought you were. You know, you went, went to a Catholic high school, Catholic parish. You've only been to college for a year. But, you know, a lot can change in a year. So now I was just thinking, great, now how do I get through another two or three hours of this date? I don't really want to be on anymore. But, I mean, you know, still make it a, a pleasant experience. You don't want to be rude or anything. Uh, but I will say then that when you discern dating, get the important stuff out of the way right off the table first. And it's not video games. It's who do you share the most important values you have with someone who will be your spouse, who will raise your children. That's why I'm glad I met Laura. Not only do we share fundamental values, but she likes video games too. We play little Super Mario Brothers together, and that's always fun when the kids go to bed. And it's like, good, you're in bed. Now we can play with your toys. <laughs> All right. So, uh, but let's um, Philly the Max. Does it still exist? Answer is. It's gone. Doesn't exist anymore. Now it's just a Mr. Mesquite Taqueria. Uh, the movie theater next door looks like it might be out of business too. I'm not sure. I saw some old retro movies there. That was always a lot of fun. But yeah, no more, uh, no more Philly to the max. While I was driving around, I came across one restaurant that I couldn't believe I forgot to put it on the list. And that would be Los Armando's Mexican food. See, when I was in high school, this is right next to my old high school. And me and my friends, we lived probably within a half mile of this restaurant. So we were always coming here to eat or after football games, we'd find our way here late at night. And it's good, solid Mexican food. And I remember one of the saddest days in high school, actually. Uh, we came into the restaurant to have our, our late night snack. And the manager who knew us all by name, because we've been here so much, said, oh, I'm sorry, boys, the, the salsa bar is gone. We're like, what do you mean it's gone? He said, somebody broke into the restaurant and took the salsa bar. We were like, what monster? What monster would break into this restaurant just to take the salsa bar? And it was gone. And I just checked inside. It's still not back. It's been 20 years. So, but uh, th I'm glad this one is, is still basically how I remember it, even sans salsa bar. Finally, number five is the Snack Shack at Scottsdale Community College, home of the fighting artichokes. Yes, our mascot was an artichoke. I kind of like community college. I like that I just showed up, did my classes, and I left. And then I had my college life on campus, and then a regular life other places, not getting caught up in the whole college experience. And so I enjoyed that. No nonsense, very economical. And I remember there was a little creature comfort that I loved on campus that I would go. I remember sometimes, though, I was bad about attending classes. I was so lazy about attendance. I remember once a friend, uh, one, a friend and I, we shared a class. And some days I was so lazy, I would, he carpooled with me. I would take him to class, drop him off, and then pick him up because I just could not go to, go to class. I was just a bad, lazy student. But when I was on campus, between classes... There was a little snack shack, and for $2.50, I could get the most delicious grilled cheese sandwich I ever had. It was perfectly toasted bread, buttered on both sides, excellent mixture of cheese in the middle. It was just absolutely delightful grilled cheese sandwich and a medium Sierra mist. And it was a nice little perk pick me up between classes and get me through the day. It was just a pleasant little creature comfort. And I remember it so well being on that being on that campus. So I decided to swing by. Is the Snack Shack still there? 
Give me some hope, is it there? So I'm like 90% sure they tore down the old snack shack. I'm pretty sure it was where that big utility box is right now, surrounded by concrete and stuff. So I think it was there, or maybe it was over there where there's a bunch of fencing and stuff that they tore down, or it could have been over there where there's more fencing and stuff that's been torn down. So the good old snack shack, I think it's gone to artichoke heaven. Oh, we're striking out again. We're striking out again. It's gone. It's gone. <sighs> oh, well, doesn't matter because I've got other great eateries now that I can make new memories with, with my kiddos uh, right here in Texas. Maybe I should do a little foodie free for all Friday in the future about what's local around here. The best Texas barbecue, best Tex-Mex. Uh, don't listen if you're hungry. So we'll see about that. But thank you guys so much for indulging me in a little nostalgia on free for all Friday. And I hope you have a very blessed week. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you want to help us produce more great content like this, be sure to click subscribe and go to trenthornpodcast.com to become a premium subscriber. You'll help us create more videos like this and get access to bonus content and sneak peeks of our upcoming projects.